Hey guys, it's Leia. Today we'll focus on how to solve integrals with an integrand that contains trig powers, specifically sine of x and cosine of x. Before we start learning about how to solve these integrals, it's important to refresh your mind on these four identities. They'll come in handy when solving the integrals. We'll first focus on how to solve integrals with trig functions with odd powers. If cosine of x and or sine of x have an odd power in the integrand, then you save a single factor of cosine of x or sine of x in the integrand and rewrite the rest using this trig identity. We'll see what this means in the next example. Our first example is the integral of cosine of x to the fifth. The reason why we want to have a single factor of cosine of x or sine of x in the integrand is because when we solve using u substitution and set u equal to cosine of x, then du equals to negative sine of x dx, and we can see that there is no negative sine of x in the integrand. So that's why we want to have a single factor of cosine of x or sine of x in the integrand. So in this case, we're able to pull out a cosine of x from cosine of x to the fifth. We'll then rewrite cosine of x to the fourth as cosine of x squared, and that's squared. Next, we'll use a trig identity. We'll use sine of x squared plus cosine of x squared equals 1, and we'll rewrite that as cosine of x squared equals 1 minus sine of x squared, and we'll substitute this in for cosine of x squared. And now we're able to solve using u substitution, and we set u equal to the trig function with the higher power, which is sine of x, and therefore du equals cosine of x dx. So we substitute u and du back into the integrand. We then solve the integral and substitute back in sine of x. We finally get our answer, which is 1 fifth times sine of x to the fifth minus 2 thirds times sine of x cubed plus sine of x plus c. For a more in-depth solution, you can check out Symbolab. Next example, we have the integral of sine of x squared times cosine of x cubed with respect to x. We can see that we need to pull out a single factor, and this time we'll pull out one from cosine of x cubed. And that leaves us with the integral of sine of x squared times cosine of x squared times cosine of x we will then rewrite cosine of x squared using the trig identity. We don't rewrite sine of x squared because if we did that, that would leave us with an integrand filled with cosine of x and thus not allowing us to use u substitution. All right, so now that we have substituted in one minus sine of x squared for cosine of x squared, we can go ahead and use u substitution, setting u equal to the trig function with the higher power, which is sine of x, and therefore du is equal to cosine of x dx, and now we substitute u and du back into the integrand. We solve the integral using the power rule, substitute sine of x back in, and we get one third times sine of x cubed, minus one-fifth times sine of x to the fifth, plus c as our answer. Now we'll learn the strategy for even powers. The trick to solving these integrals is to use one or more of the following identities. Let's now see an example with even powers. We have the integral of cosine of x squared times sine of x squared with respect to x. We want to use one of the three identities mentioned before. We could rewrite sine of x squared as 1 minus cosine of 2 of x over 2 and cosine of x squared as 1 plus cosine of 2 of x over 2. However, the simpler way to solve this would be to use the last identity. So we'll rewrite the integrand as cosine of x times sine of x squared and use that trig identity and substitute it into the integrand. We simplify this, and we can see that we can use another trig identity. We can use sine of x squared equals 1 minus cosine of 2 of x over 2. So we'll substitute that in for sine of 2 of x squared, but don't forget that it's sine of 2 of x and not sine of x. So we get 1 minus cosine of 4 of x over 4 times 2.
Next, we'll pull out the constant 1 eighth using the constant multiplication rule. And after that, we'll use u sub to solve the rest. We set u equal to 4x and 1 fourth du equal to dx. After we use the sum rule, we get 1 eighth times x minus 1 over 32 times sine of 4x plus c as our answer. Here's a summary of what we've learned so far. If both or either sine of x and cosine of x have an odd power, we save one factor of cosine of x or sine of x, and then we rewrite the rest using the trig identity sine of x squared plus cosine of x squared equals 1. What does that mean? If you have the integral of sine of x cubed times cosine of x squared with respect to x, we want to save a single factor, and we'll do this by pulling 1 out from the odd power. And we'll rewrite the rest using sine of x squared plus cosine of x equals 1. If both sine of x and cosine of x have an even power, then we just use one or more of the following identities. Solving these integrals takes a lot of practice, so for more help, visit 